My mindset is get through it as quickly as possible and get back to normal as quick as possible. Definitely something to beat. Total pelvic accentuation is one of the very biggest procedures we do, certainly within urology and colorectal surgery. You're clearing out the, the contents of somebody's pelvis, and that's what the operation entails. It's very much a marathon rather than a sprint. So back, front, side, join, staple. I think that's it. I think it probably is one of the longest duration of operations. And that's probably because we are right at the limit of what a human body can tolerate. It's a very hard choice for patients to make, caught in the place between a chance of cure and the changes that will come afterwards. I think any patient who doesn't come to theatre scared has probably not quite understood what they're about to face. All right, we're going to give you a bit of oxygen to breathe. Have a good sleep. Everybody happy? Happy to proceed? Happy? Good. The thing that, that I worry about the most with this type of surgery is, is bleeding bleeding and bleeding, that's what we're keen to avoid because of the immediate threat to the patient's life. OK, just re relax a second. Mm -hmm. Scissors. We've got a, we've got a venous bleed. If there is a significant bleed. Step number one is keep your cool. Of course there is adrenaline involved, but there's absolutely no need for panic. It's very intuitive. Nicola will know that I'm going to press on whatever area is bleeding to control it. And I will know that she'll be preparing stitches to repair it. It is really good just knowing that there is somebody at your side who is capable not just of helping you deal with it, but also of making sure that it's likely to be more successful. That's quite reassuring. What we're going to do now is mobilize the bladder. <laughs> Accentorative surgery, it requires a lot of dexterity at times and really, really fine movements coupled sometimes with strenuous uh, manoeuvres in terms of trying to remove a tumour. It does take a physical toll on you, certainly when you're 12, 13, 14 hours of, of surgery. You do know that you've been operating for the whole day. There's really, really good tissue over the tumour there. So the majority of the tumour is in here. It's immensely satisfying to know that you've given Stuart the best chance of cure you can. So can we have the large specimen pot? You could use the This catheter. is specimen E, which is total pelvic accentuation. It is the point at which you realise that you've actually delivered what you set out to do. There's a moment of satisfaction before we start the process of putting the patient back together again. I think when you come back a second day after prolonged surgery, you're aware that Stuart won't remember everything that we took out of his pelvis, but he will remember the position of his stomas and whether they work, because that's the thing that's going to dictate his quality of life. Fly. If everybody's happy, let's go ahead. Thank you. 
going to have to close this really carefully here. At the end of the operation, there's an overwhelming sense of satisfaction. There aren't many jobs where you would work for 20 hours continuously and expect not to feel tired. It's natural. It always feels good to tick things off. The most important thing is to tick the final one, which is closure. Hello, it's Nicola Fernhead from Adam Brooks. We are very positive. I'm managing the stoma bags and the stomas quite well. It's just they're, they're so unpredictable. Stuart's always got a good attitude towards his recovery. He's very stubborn and positive. It was the best news I heard. I mean, I, uh, every time I say it, I practically break and burst into tears. I find it hard not to. It says the beginning of a new chapter. Don't sit around doing nothing. Make the most of what chance you've been given. Don't waste it.